story. I'm joined live from Copenhagen by Mohammed Shahada. He is the Chief of Communications at Euro Mediterranean Human Rights Monitor. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Mohammed. Um, the inference to take from the story we've just heard and indeed the statistics is that there's never been a more dangerous time to be a journalist, particularly in the Middle East. Yes, absolutely. Traditionally, people during conflicts in war zones in dangerous areas, they would either distinguish themselves if they work in the press with press marked vests or if they work in the medical sector with very distinct clothing. But in the case of the occupied Palestinian territories, wearing any distinct clothing only outs you as a target. It puts a target on your head. There is the belief amongst journalists in Gaza is that one of the most dangerous things you can do during this war is not to pick up a gun but to pick up a camera to try to report on what's happening. It is an integral part of this genocidal campaign to try to suppress coverage of what's happening on the ground in order to unleash unconstrained violence and destruction on the population. Yeah, Israel, of, Israel of course, has, has denied allegations of genocide consistently through the conflict. Uh, they have also denied access for independent journalism. Uh, what do you read into that? Oh, well, Israel denies a lot of things. The accused will always deny the accusation in terms of genocide. But you have a growing consensus amongst prominent international scholars and experts and human rights advocates who say that it is a genocide that's unfolding. You have the, the ICJ saying that it's a plausible, there is a plausible case for genocide. In terms of denying access, since day one of this war, what differs from previous wars that Israel unleashed on Gaza is, as you said, the conscious decision to prevent any foreign journalists from being in Gaza itself, which is coupled with a smear campaign against Gazan journalists in the enclave, constantly saying they cannot be trusted, they are part of Hamas, they work for Hamas, they are under Hamas's censorship. If you put the two together, the picture you get is a deliberate conscious effort to suppress any coverage of what's happening on the ground, especially if you take in mind Israel's earlier attempts to cut Gaza's telecommunication, internet, cell phone coverage, and destroy infrastructure that is relevant to maintaining coverage of what's happening. And we had the story uh, some months ago, Mohammed, of, of I think it was seven aid workers killed in Gaza. Um, and that was a huge story, a huge story reported around the world. Do you uh, feel or suspect there's, there's a double standard here in that when it is foreign workers who are killed, it gets 10 times more coverage uh, than when it is local Palestinian journalists? It's the same when it comes to basic journalism. If a Palestinian journalist comes up with photographic and video evidence of a particular incident, Israel is always given the benefit of the doubt. It gets more resonance and more impact if a foreign journalist says the exact same thing word for word. So Palestinians usually say one thing about Israel, then they have to wait a decade or two, for instance, with the accusation of apartheid, until a foreign organization or a foreign media platform uses the same or reaches the same conclusion, then it gets more resonance. This is a double standards that needs to be addressed. There is the other issue with Israel's deliberate, deliberate smearing, targeting, harassing, intimidating journalists in Gaza. I know journalists who got phone calls from Israeli officers telling them, stop reporting, stop what you're doing. Others were targeted and killed specifically. And you had the IDF going out and saying, yes, we targeted those and then making an unsubstantiated claim that they were Hamas without any evidence. Mohammed, we thank you very much indeed for coming on the news hour. Mohammed Shahara there live for us.